Which little dog are you sitting on this side tonight like that? My little Valentine dog. My guys. Well, it is an exciting Wednesday night uh, to be sitting alone with my little dog in Doomsday Trailer. That would be, uh, of course, an exciting Wednesday night, February 14th. 2024, and uh, <laughs> since uh, I find myself sitting alone in Doomsday Trailer at the end of a rutted out dirt road in a swamp in Florida, there, there, there is no way that I am going to debase myself by going on pile of fish uh, looking for my Doomer Chick forever. So I will just sit here and talk to my little imaginary friends on, uh, on YouTube, my little imaginary Valentines. So, <clears throat> I, 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 you know, I'm a little bit torn on this rant. I was, I was going to put this in my Ain't Gonna Happen uh, roundup on Friday, but I've noticed you know, I've only been taking eight going to happen stories for five days, and I'll have like 300 to go over. Uh, and and I, I thought I had actually was going to make it through a story about the collapse of a planet w w w w w without ain't going to happen. And so since, I, since it's virtually impossible to go on the mainstream media, <clears throat> and uh, not have every anything related to do with, with the state of the planet uh, end up in my ain't gonna happen file. So I, I'm having a little better luck over at medium.com you know looking for someone uh, not afraid to say it ain't gonna happen. It ain't gonna fucking happen. And I thought that finally I had found a, a, a fellow Doomer uh, who understands it ain't going to happen. This is a fellow named George Dillard. George Dillard, uh, I guess he writes about politics, environment, education, and history. So he kind of mixes all of that up in uh, today's rant, leaning towards environment. I guess so. Uh, I was drawn to this, you know, after doing my screaming rant uh, about Costa Rica last night about how you know the Planet Eaters absolutely destroying one of the last wild Garden of Edens on the planet and doing whatever they did to Costa Rica. Don't need to rehash that. So I open up the number one story on Medium.com after that rant this morning. There's this piece by uh, George Dillard titled The Last Hunt. The Last Hunt. Humans are destroying some of the last wild places on Earth. No, George. Humans are destroying every single, every single one of the last wild places on Earth. But... Anyway, I'll let that one slide. So, uh, what he talks about, uh, he, 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 you know, not, not a, he's not the most original writer. George starts talking about the uh, total annihilation of the passenger pigeon uh, off the face of the planet. Spends a long time talking about the annihilation of those, you know, those birds, the passenger pigeons, which went extinct in 1914. And then he goes from there talking about the almost extinction of, of bison. Uh, I'm going to put this on. You, you can read this. You know, it's a pretty well uh, written story. We, we've all heard the story of... Uh, of the passenger pigeon, but I just wanted to point out, and, 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 and I don't know, I remember, I'm pretty sure it was in the book 1491. 1491 was 
was that written by Ronald Wright or not, about what this country looked like, you know, when the noble savages were running the show here and then Honky got here uh, and, and upset the apple cart. He had a real interesting theory in there about passenger pigeons that some, I can't remember the theory, and it's not proven, but it was a very interesting theory about these passenger pigeons that what this explosion and this number of passenger pigeons and the years that followed Honky coming in here and basically killing all the noble savages that had done such a great job of running the country and did this something between the handover from the noble savages to Honky uh, that passenger pigeons exploded and they were way out of balance that you never hear the noble savages talking about the sky being darkened by these birds you never heard it from them because it didn't happen I, it, I mean it, well, it, it happened but, but anyway, a very interesting story uh, that there were never supposed to be 500 billion uh, passenger pigeons in the first place. But whatever the story is, we all know how the story ended, okay? Uh, that once Honky got here, that they actually managed to send that one extinct as one that the noble savages just never could figure out how to get to like they did those 15 genre of megafauna that uh, I wanted to let's see uh, okay this one and, 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 and I and I and I almost did the rant so I'm just gonna break into this story uh, every once in a while so now he's talking about bison which, which is another very interesting story. Uh, you might want to listen to my interview. Uh, oh boy, now I got Ronald Wright's name on my brain. I am, I am very embarrassed. I can't remember the fellow. Good Lord, who was the fellow that I was talking to about, uh, uh, about the story of bison? Just so you understand the what we call the American bison are invaders. They are invasive species. There was such a thing as an American bison. It was about twice the size uh, uh, of these little pussies that call themselves bison today. This big ass, you talk about a bison, but uh, they were already extinct by, by, by the time these little pipsqueaks got over here, uh, they came over uh, with humans. Uh, for all I know, they, uh, they, the, the humans were chasing the bison, and, and that's how they got across the land bridge. But you do understand that th these bison were an invasive species never existed on the in 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 this country uh, till about twelve or thirteen thousand years ago. Uh, just a little factoid, and that the uh, real American bison was one of the fifteen genera of megafauna that were wiped out by the original humans. But anyway, I just wanted to. To, to stir up the, uh, you know, I, I love stirring up the, the uh, people still uh, uh, deluding themselves with the myth of the noble savage. Anyway, okay. <clears throat> the bison survived, though in severely reduced numbers, the passenger pigeon did not. How did each of these species go so rapidly from abundance to disaster? The answer is pretty simple. The answer is pretty simple. 
George's answer is industrialized hunting. My answer is humans. How did each of these species go so rapidly from abundance to disaster? The answer is pretty simple. Humans. You can't get any simpler than that. You know, I've been, uh, I'm sure, that, and there's even a <clears throat> medium.com story in, in here today, too, that Crystal Rivers did about this new report about uh, migratory species, about how humans have completely fucked. Uh, a lot, like what, it, what is it? Half uh, of, of migratory species are in decline, 20% getting ready to go extinct when you get into migratory fish, the number, it, 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 anyway, but at least I noticed the mainstream media is making a little bit of progress. Several of the stories said that the reason for, you know, all of these migratory species going extinct was human activities. Human activities are the reason, uh, you know, industrialized hunting being a human activity. Uh, so they're, they're, they're making progress and, and, and instead of saying some horse shit like I was reading about some Florida panther that was hit by a goddamn train or, 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 or something, and, and how the article, whenever you read an article about Florida panthers, the main reason Florida panthers, the, the, the main threat to Florida panthers is collisions with vehicles. Which makes it sound like, you know, I think as I said, there's a parked car and a panther is running along and collides with a parked car. The reason panthers are going extinct is because humans are running them over with cars and freight trains. Okay? Vehicles don't kill panthers. Humans kill panthers. Okay? There is one human activity that is killing everything from Florida panthers to passenger pigeons to bison to fish. There is one human activity, one human activity only, and we all know what that is on Valentine's Day. Well, some of us know what that is on Valentine's Day. Of course, I don't know what that is on Valentine's Day. One activity, breeding. If humans would stop breeding, would stop one activity, every other human activity would, would fall by the wayside. So let's cut the crap. It's not human activities with the exception of breeding. It is not human activities. It's not industrial farming. It's not climate ch anthropogenic climate change. It's not pollution. It's, you know what I'm saying. It is humans. Humans. Do we get it? So anyway, so George, he does a pretty good job, guys. And this is a long article. I mean, there's, it's pretty basic for a doomers. I, I mean, this is kind of like a high school ecology class, but it's pretty well written. And, uh, and, and if you don't know the story of the passenger pigeon and the bison, and then he gets into the whole... Uh, overfishing. Uh, so we're still hunting fish like we once hunted bison and pigeons and in the process assaulting one of the last wild places on earth, the ocean. I'm not talking here about people heading down to the local lake with a pole and a tackle box. 
modern commercial fishing is very different from that as we did with bison and passenger pigeon hunting we have developed aggressive industrialized methods of killing fish this global hunt has badly damaged the living world of the oceans and then he does an excellent job of describing all of the different forms of industrialized fishing and uh, so this is uh, if you want to educate yourself on that of course we get to uh, to hear about bycatch and and all of this but I like when he talks about uh, sustainability uh, about the definition of sustainable uh, sustainable fishing there is no such thing as sustainable fishing this is why I do not eat seafood called virtue signaling right this industrialized assault on the world's oceans is taking no you're sitting over here now you're not going to get up in the middle of my ramps and leave You're trapped. Settle down. Be a good little Valentine dog. This industrialized assault on the world's oceans is taking a toll. The fishing industry likes to think of fish as a natural resource like copper or oil and rather than a key part of the web of life. So they talk about sustainability in those terms what level of fishing will allow us to keep fishing at our current level? By that measure, more than one-third of the world's fish stocks are being hunted unsustainably. But this is, I think, do you think so, George, too optimistic a sustainably managed fish population can be reduced to half or less than half of its original quote virgin size. This means that many of the sustainably harvested, you know, all of this crap, these uh, eco labels, these unadulterated horse shit uh, eco labels, to uh, that these little limp dick lefties think they're, they're, that they're saving the planet by eating sustainable seafood, you might want to understand, you clueless moron, uh, that a when you're buying one of these things, that a sustainably managed fish population can be reduced to half or less than half of its original virgin size, this means that many of the sustainably harvested species uh, have been dramatically reduced from their natural numbers. Their populations are sustainable for the fishing industry, but they are nowhere near what they could or should be. And as, for more, and as for more than a third of species that are overexploited, a proportion that has doubled since the 1980s, they are in even deeper trouble. Uh, hunting a population of fish in such large numbers can unbalance entire ecosystems. It can disrupt the social behavior of fish, blah, blah, blah. Some species, when overfished, have hit mysterious, mysterious tipping points that have caused their populations to collapse catastrophically. The truth is that humans have, at least he said humans and not human activity, have reduced most land species to a shadow of their former populations. 
first by hunting, then by eliminating their habitats, and now by changing the climate, uh, where you know where this is all going. We have stripped the Earth's land-based ecosystem of much of their richness. The oceans are some of the last wild places on Earth, but commercial fishing operations are engaging in one last hunt of wild animals killing fish in mind-boggling numbers. There is one problem with this story. And, and, and I read about one-third of the story. This was a long, a hell of a lot. I just picked out a few tidbits from the story. Uh, so we get down to the final paragraph, the last two lines. After that, uh, this, the, the sentence I just read, and then George Dillard, after talking about how humans have completely fucked this planet. And, and, and that we're on just a bloodthirsty, unstoppable tirade. Okay? And then this is what this man says to wrap up. There is still time to allow these ocean ecosystems to recover! Perhaps, perhaps humans can find a way to stop the last big hunt before it's too late. What do you think, Sancho Panza? Do you think there is still time to allow these ocean ecosystems to recover as now we're cranking up deep sea mining? Perhaps humans can find a way to stop the last big hunt before it is too late. So obviously Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles had to respond to this story. And, and George Dillard, I, 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 I want to fucking answer, George. I, this, this is no joke. I want to hear from you, brother. I'm challenging you to defend the, 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 this, this horse shit uh, ending. Uh, all right, good for uh, Anthony Lawrence. He calling out this bullshit. And guess what Anthony Lawrence said? We won't. We won't. Aside from taking too much, we continue polluting. There is no hope. 101 claps. Uh, we won't. Uh, people are beginning to figure this out. Uh, what does Sam Mitchell at Collapse Chronicles have to say? you know, uh, talking about this bullshit uh, at the end. George, you were doing so good until you came up with that happy horseshit hopium ain't gonna happen ending and you know it. You know goddamn well, George Dillard, that that's, that's fucking bullshit. That what came out of your mouth or your typewriter keys. What the fuck are you thinking? Are, are you trying to get printed on the mainstream media? You know goddamn well that you're lying out your fucking teeth. You don't believe it for a fucking minute. There's a bit here. Seriously, I want you to explain to your readers where that crap came from. Where did that bullshit come from, George? You ought to be embarrassed. We won't. Ain't gonna fucking happen, George. You fucking know it. You know it. I know it. Sancho Panza knows it. Is it gonna happen, Sancho? 
We're going to kill every fucking fish in the goddamn ocean. We're going to kill every fucking animal on this planet. Just like the goddamn passenger pigeon. We ain't going to stop. We won't stop. We can't stop. And here it is, Valentine's Day. Getting the whole damn world out, going for it. Yes, anyway, little dog, will you be my Valentine? So, uh, it's been such a lovely Valentine evening, uh, here at Collapse Chronicles, uh, so I guess uh, the little dog and I, we're going to go watch Netflix. We're watching a, uh, a series about some, uh, about some uh, cult leader claiming that uh, he, he's doing something with the Elohim. Don't get me talking about the Elohim. I will get off on a little red-haired girl Valentine rant. Anyway, get out there and enjoy hanging out with your lover. Just keep your pecker in your pants on Valentine's Day, please. Bye, guys. Yes, little Valentine dog. Yeah, because you, you, you ate your food too quick, didn't you? You know you did that, didn't you? <laughs>